Located at the top of Wisconsin, Bayfield County is considered by many of the locals to be the wild side of the dairy state. This is a place of majestic beauty with national treasures that include the Apostle Islands, the natural wonders of its sea caves, and rugged sandstone cliffs that frame the clear waters of Lake Superior. This is Bayfield County Wild. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Nancy Christopher. And I'm Mary Motif, Director of Bayfield County Tourism. September is a great month to visit Bayfield County and we're excited about all the different things that are going to start becoming available at the orchards, including hard cider. That's right, so pick your designated driver and head to orchard country. Now is the perfect time to tour the orchards and cideries. How many orchards are there in Bayfield County, Mary? There are nearly a dozen orchards in Bayfield County and that doesn't include any of the berry farms. So what can people expect when they arrive at one of these orchards? So a lot of the orchards are surrounding Bayfield and they're near County Highway J, which loops from State Highway 13, which is the Wisconsin Lake Superior Scenic Byway. So it loops from that Highway 13 around Bayfield and then meets back up with it again north of Bayfield. And so because there are so many orchards along that, it's a lot of times referred to as the Fruit Loop. (laughs) I like that. So you mentioned that some of these farms have cideries. What exactly is a cidery and is going to one like going to a brewery? So a cidery is similar to a brewery in some ways. So you're brewing hard cider and some of the orchards that have cideries are doing the brewing on site and you can visit them. And it is like touring a brewery in the sense that you can see the operation and do some tasting and of course, buy the product. So there are a few different scenarios. So there are uh, a couple of the orchards that have their cider and they send it to White Winter Winery to actually do the brewing of the hard cider. And then White Winter sends it back to them and then they sell it on site at their store. So Bayfield Apple Company does that. They process the cider in-house, send it to White Winter Winery, and then they get the finished product back that they can sell. Same with Ericsson's. They have their own cider that they send to White Winter Winery, and they sell it at their shop at the orchard. And then there are a couple of orchards that have in-house cideries. So Hauser's is one of those, and that was new to the farm in 2018, and it's called the Apple House Cidery. I think their website says hard cider from blossom to bottle made right there (laughs) at Hauser's. And I visited that during Apple Festival the year that it opened. And they have a big, you know, area set up for tastings during Apple Festival. And I'm assuming during the whole harvest season they do. And then Pikes Creek is another winery and that's at Highland Valley Farm. And they have four varieties of sparkling hard cider. And so they also are brewing the cider there on site. So you can visit the farm and the winery right there. And then coming soon is a new cider company called Blue Ox Cider. And they bought an orchard from, uh, you know, one that was selling a few years ago. And they have started brewing their cider. And they've recently won a bronze medal at the Great Lakes International Cider and Perry Competition. Wow, which congratulations. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's exciting. It's the largest cider competition in the world. And so they're not even open to the public yet for and they're already the winners yeah. and they're already winning awards <laughs> right. and so you can you can follow um, Blue Ox Cider on Facebook and Instagram and stay tuned for when they're going to open to the public in the spring. So Mary, I'm kind of curious. What makes the cider hard? Is it adding liquor or is it like the fermentation process? It's the fermentation process. So okay. it's it's a similar process to brewing beer. It's just with the different ingredients. And then I forgot to mention White Winter Winery does have four of their own hard cider varieties that they brew at White Winter Winery in Iron River. So you can make a big loop of it and go up the South Shore and and then hit Iron River for that different experience there. So there are different types of ciders that people can sample at these orchards. Yes. And I actually, I heard that one of the wineries at the wineries on Betzold Road is um, making a cider And I want to say it was like a ginger cider or a ginger pear cider. And that is available at some of the area restaurants. So they're selling it at the restaurants. And I'm not sure if they even have it on site for sale. So what else is available at the different orchards and farms? Do they have farm stores? Yes, a lot of them do have farm stores where they're selling 
all sorts of things. So each store is very unique to each of the different orchards and farms. Most of them have some sort of value-added products available that they're making, whether it's jams and jellies or maple syrup or honey or, you know, all sorts of apple mustards, those sorts of things. And then um, a lot of them have a wide variety of, of items available like clothing and decorative items and, you know, kitchen towels and, you know, cute little decorative things. And each one is so unique. So if you want to go visit orchard stores, you literally could spend the whole day doing that. You mentioned the variety of apple mustards. It's apple season in Bayfield County. Tell us about that. So it is exciting, all the apple varieties that are starting to come available. There are so many different varieties of apples that some of them will start becoming available in the early part of September. And then every week thereafter, there's going to be more new varieties available. And I saw the trees just the other day, and they're just full of apples. So it's going to be a good season. It is going to be a good season. And Craig from Sunset Valley told me that the apples double in size like their last week or something like that. It's like, it's crazy. I did not know that. So for those who want to tour Bayfield County's Fruit Loop, how can they get more information? So be sure to pick up a brochure. Um, We have those available here as well as at the Bayfield Chamber and Visitor Bureau. And I think they had them also at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. And then be sure to check the orchard update on the Chamber's website. So every week, the Bayfield Chamber and Visitor Bureau contacts all of the orchards and finds out what exactly is available currently. And so it's a really, really great way to find out who has the varieties that you're looking for and you can go find them. All right. Well, thanks, Mary. And I'm glad you mentioned Craig Johnson because coming up next, you're actually heading out to one of those orchards to talk to Sharon and Craig. So stay with us. Cafe Coco offers a breakfast, lunch, and deli menu with daily specials, fresh pastries and baked goods, a large selection of breads, and custom-designed cakes for all your special occasions. Coco focuses on locally sourced foods and also offers gluten-free, vegan, and vegetarian options. Cafe Coco can also create creative, beautiful, and delicious catering menus for any type of special event. Visit CocoNorth.com or find Coco Artisan Bakery and Good Eats on Facebook. Welcome back. This is the 52nd year of Sunset Valley Orchard. Yes, it is. 1967. um, I'm excited to be here talking with Craig and Sharon Johnson about their 52 fruitful years on the farm. Thanks for taking some time out to talk with us today. Thank you for coming. It's good to have you. First of all, congratulations are in order. Give us some history, if you would, on Sunset Valley. What brought you to the area and how did you get started here? My husband brought me. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh a, yeah. That's a kind of long story. I spent a few years up here. My grandpa used to own Almond's Orchard, which he bought from Brett Burtness. And I spent about a month and a half helping him sort some apples. It was a smaller farm. And then I went back to Chicago and worked for my father for a while. And I thought we'd come up here and buy a lot for a, just a summer house. And I failed. I ended up buying a farm. <laughs> and uh, it took several years. Leon McCarty showed us several different places to buy it with Bill McCarty's father. Believe it or not, that's how long ago. He said, there's this farm out here I don't have a listing on. First year we looked at it said no. Second time I came out here and I said, mm-hmm. yeah, he took us for a ride around it. And he told me how much he wanted for it. And it all I had was $9 and that's what I put down on it. And he says, you got a deal. <laughs> but and, a little and, more than you bargained for, though. Well, I told <laughs> yeah. him I would be back in two weeks to, with some more money, but that's all I had on me. He said he'd hold it for two weeks, nice. which he did. No. So anyway, that's how we kind of got here. When we left Chicago, it was six degrees below zero, and it was in January. And when we got here, it was 18 degrees below zero. <laughs> and we didn't have any family at that time. Of course, we didn't have any money either. Hopefully some long johns or something. Well, Craig's mom and dad and my mom and dad helped us move. So it was a 22-hour trip from Chicago land. We moved up here in a three-day blizzard. We had no choice but to keep coming. (laughs) Wow. Well, we're glad you made it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, boy. When we got here, we could not. It was in the middle of the night, so we stayed at the Bayfield Inn. Okay. Sig Dalkus was the manager. 
And when we walked in there, he said, take any room you want because they're all empty. <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. Because no one else came during no. the snowstorm. Just no. you guys. No, after, so after about two shots of brandy and I jumped in bed and we came out here the next morning. Nice. And they actually had at the town yeah. hall a welcoming party for us and a go-away party for Kruger's. But we missed it. We missed it. We oh, because <laughs> You missed your own party. Yeah. We didn't get here Darn. until the next day. Oh my gosh. Craig, tell me what varieties of apples you grow here and, and if you have any other fruit. There's probably about 10 or 12 different varieties, but the most asked for one is a Honeycrisp now. Sure. The second one would be a Cortland. And then we have some Honey Golds, Spartans, Macintosh, Firesides, Fuji's. Uh, Fuji's. We got new Fuji's. And I got a bunch of Zestars planted, but they're going to start fruiting them. next year. Okay. And I got some Galas planted. And we do have quite a few pears this year we're going to have. Nice. Sunrise pears, and we got Parker pears. So we should have quite a volume of them this year, too. Nice. Um, is it pick your own, or is it pre-picked? or Both. Some of both, okay. Do, do more people want to pick, or do they want them pre-picked, or is it really a mix? It's a big mix, I think. It's, okay. Yeah. A lot of families come and they want the kids to have something to do and have an experience. When we first came here, there were families that would come and would buy two or three bushels, and then they would take them home. Well, in this day and age, nobody buys a bushel of apples. They buy a bag of apples. Sure. Do either of you make any specialty foods with the fruit that you grow here? Bayfield's best cider. Bayfield's so best cider. So told. Excellent. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to... You'll have to come back and sample. I, that's right, I will. <laughs> no, yeah, I told them all, go around to all the orchards, and they laugh at me when I say that, but they come back and they buy. <laughs> nice. And then, Sharon, can you tell us a little bit about the apple branch? Well, the apple branch is, a, I guess, a unique. Sometimes I only have one of a kind. All the time it's housewares and fashions and jam jellies and things like that. When did you decide to open the apple branch? probably 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And it's extended. I know that you do have a really nice variety of items for sale there. Well, there's and jewelry, scarves, gloves. It, it is. And during the seasons, I try to do something seasonal. Nice. Is the shop open year round? It is open from Memorial Day weekend until the second week of December. I oh, do do nice. a Christmas open house. Very nice. So watch for the dates. You know, and that's <laughs> I think people could really make a trip just to come and do their holiday shopping in this area and, and come to all the little specialty shops like yours. It, it would be fun. It, it, I think people think they're coming out into the middle of nowhere sometimes, but we're only two and three quarter miles from town. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, called, just... it's called Sunset Valley. Is that because you have a gorgeous sunset here? Oh, yes. I'm guessing? <laughs> yes. No, we do. No, people have walked out that shop door of an evening and th the sky is between red and purple. I mean, the sun nice. is setting, and on a gloomy day, it's really, truly, if the sun sets on a gloomy day, those trees in the fall light right up like somebody put fluorescent bulbs in them. Oh, wow. It's really, it's kind of eerie, but it's really pretty. Well, it's a gorgeous spot, and I'm going to do a little video um, while I'm out here so that we can put that on the website so people can see what a beautiful spot this is. It really is it, gorgeous. Thank you. Let's see, can people tour the property when they come out? Oh, yes. They can even pitch a tent if they want to <laughs> stay overnight. I, they walk their dogs, or you know, or they can. There's a hiking trail up around the back here. You can, and you just tell people to go ahead and explore. And yeah. well, there's getting to be too many people. I personally can't take every customer by hand and show them. Sure. But when I can, I do. Uh, years ago, when we didn't have so much people coming here, I did. With everyone would go out and even help them pick apples. But I do what I can now. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's. This picnic table, there's one right there in the pine trees, and there's, and there's three out there. And there's been about two or three orchard. weddings here. In the orchard. Oh, I was going to ask too. Yeah, weddings. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've had weddings, but there's one mm -hmm. family that comes and well, actually the mother passed away two years ago, so they haven't really been here, but they would spend the whole day on Apple Festival weekend. And <laughs> one time Billy says to me, Mom, I can smell the bratwurst coming across over the hill. <laughs> They were just cooking out she here and stuff. It was the other oh, over there. Oh. And then it was them out in the orchard. Oh, <laughs> that, that, it's pretty nice afternoon for nice. folks. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Most, I love it. Yeah. People can feel at home. Well, they here. spread a blanket and they just they just have the whole day. Oh, that's great. <laughs> for those people who don't know, where is Sunset Valley Orchard located? From the city of Bayfield, coming up Washington Avenue, 
which turns into I, the County stop sign. I, sure. The stop sign is there at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So then now you'll be on J, and you just follow it until you see the red sign that says Sunset Valley, and it curves off to the right, and then you're on Valley Road, and we're a quarter mile on Valley Road. And I noticed a very similar sign then at the end of your driveway, which is very good, um, you know, yes. signage for you. People can recognize it yes. once they see that first one. And if you come in on the south end of town by the fish hatchery, the hatchery road, right, it's straight, straight two and a quarter miles. Quarter I missed miles. that turn on my way here. Oh. I, I was going, I wasn't paying attention and I went, darn, there I went. <laughs> I say look for the state building. Two, yes. That's exactly two and a quarter miles from the fish hatchery. And we have a special shortcut if you're coming in from the north, but you might oh. want to call and get that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's easy. Where can we learn more about the orchard and the apple branch? Well, I'm hoping online on the website and the Facebook page. Excellent. And um, I do have rack cards out and about, and I am a member of the chamber, so Great. they should have information. So that would mean um, that people can check that orchard report. Um, you give them updates yes. then when they mm -hmm. call, and then mm -hmm. you can uh, go right on there and find out what's available yes. currently or you know coming up. So. Or get the phone number and just call, and we'll tell you, and we'll reserve or Great. whatever you need done. Well. So. You yeah. sound very flexible and helpful. <laughs> and so I would encourage everyone to make a trip Thank to you. Sunset Valley. Thank you. And the Apple Branch. Yeah. All right, very good. Thanks, Thank Mary. you. Thank you both. And next up, Nancy and I are back at the Bayfield County Wild Studios to talk about fall fun, so don't go away. Drummond Lake Campground adjoins a public park with a swimming beach, a picnic pavilion, and a paved boat landing. It's located at the heart of the Shawamigan Nicolay National Forest at the trailhead of a vast ATV trail system with public parking and restrooms. The campground is located within walking distance of the library, historic museum, and visitor center, restaurants and pubs, a post office, bank and convenience store with bait, gas, firewood, and grocery items. There are 17 RV sites with showers and other amenities. Tents are welcome, too. Find out more at DrummondLakeCampground.com. Welcome back to Bayfield County Wild. Great stuff about the orchards, Mary. But there are lots of other things to do in September. What can you tell us? Well, as usual, there are a lot of events happening in September, and it starts off with the Port Wing Annual Fish Boil the first weekend of September. And after that, there is a new event called the Classic Boat and Schooner Rendezvous up at the Bayfield Waterfront. And you can go and view vessels as they come in and out of the harbor there. There's actually a boat parade at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Oh, cool. There's a pirate's ball fundraiser that <laughs> night where you can you don't have to, but you can go dressed as a pirate. And that looks like a lot of fun. But I don't want to be a pirate. Oh, all right. You don't have to. <laughs> you can just look at the other pirates. I reference uh, to Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that, sorry. <laughs> and then the Cornucopia Art Crawl is September 7th. I should mention that Classic Boat and Schooner Rendezvous is actually September 6th through the 8th. So the same weekend as the Cornucopia Art Crawl. And then that is also the same weekend as the Big Top Chautauqua Old Last Night, which is their official last night of their house performances. They do have a couple of special events that happen later, though. And then one of our bigger mountain bike events happens September 14th. It's the Schwamigan Mountain Bike Fat Tire Festival, it's called. And that is actually a really huge event down in the cable area, which is lots of fun. And there's always post-race parties to attend if you don't want to get out there on your bike. And then Red Cliff Days is September 20th through the 22nd this year, where they have lots of fun activities happening up north of Bayfield at the Red Cliff Reservation. And then that same weekend, I think this is the first one, the Fish Flippin' 5K Run Walk. <laughs> and it's it's part of the Iron River National Fish Hatchery Open House Weekend. So that's their event. And then here's one of those special events, Big Tap Chautauqua. Oh, it's got to be a beer event. Exactly. So it, it features brews under the big tent, local cuisine, a commemorative tasting mug, live music, hammerschlagen, and much fun. I've heard that expression before, and I think it's when you hammer nails into a stump. Using a mug of beer? <laughs> no, I'm sure they use like a mallet or something. <laughs> but right. if you live in Wisconsin, you don't do that to beer. 
No, no. You drink the beer. That would be worth just going and seeing what that is all about. I was just going to ask you, is there anything else we should know about? So if you want a little pre-taste of Apple Fest before Apple Festival happens, the week before Apple Fest, which is September 25th, it's the Apple Pie and Dessert Contest that happens at the Pavilion. And the public mm. is invited to come and indulge in the treats that are being judged at that contest. And um, it's a really vote? great... Yeah, I think there might be a people's choice category. It's a great way to just taste some really awesome desserts because believe me, the people who are entering that contest have something yummy to share. Yeah, and I bet there's no trouble finding a, a judge for that. No, absolutely not. And then that weekend, September 27th, is Cable's Big Area Fall Fest. And that has become just a really big and great event down in the Cable area. And along with that is the Berkey Trail Run. So all sorts of stuff happening in September. Lots more than I mentioned too. So be sure to check out our website, travelbayfieldcounty.com and also follow us on Facebook. All right. So what are we talking about next month? So next month we get to talk about the Delta Diner. Oh, that is a fun place. It is an awesome place. I'm really excited. And of course, it's about food, our favorite topic. Yes, exactly. Food and (laughs) drinks. Right. Which we covered today. Right. And we'll do it again in a different way next month. All right. Thanks, Mary. And to everyone listening, if you like what you've heard, please take a moment to share, review, and subscribe to Bayfield County Wild. If there's anything you'd like to know about today's episode, we'll have the links and resources available in our show notes. And on behalf of Mary and myself, Thank you for listening to Bayfield County Wild. Bye-bye.